Bola Ahmed Tinubu has tenured to the release the ministerial list to the Senate, and a lot of reactions has been thriving around this. Joining me to discuss this on big agenda, distinguished Senator Ifan Yehoba, representing the good people of Anambra South, will be joining me on this discussion. You're most welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, let me quickly ask, are you comfortable with the list being released to the Senate today by Mr. President? Well, comfortable because um, uh, Mr. President, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu was elected um, by Nigerians to take the lead, to make decisions. So this is his first ministerial list. He must have uh, done his work very well. It is, I can only come in to the judging their performance. But for him to nominate them, I can tell you, yes, I'm in support of uh, the names that was forwarded. And then it comprises one person per state. Um, uh, he has chosen those he wants to work with. Our business is to screen them and then um, clear them for appointment. Okay, just like them. But there has been this perception that the Senate hardly do a thorough screen when lists have been sent. What do you have to say about this? Well, first and foremost, it is not the duty of the Senate to do the first layer screening of um, uh, appointees or n nominees of Mr. President. The first line charge to that is the security agencies, the DSS, police, and other relevant agencies of government. So they get their clearance from the security agencies, and then um, even before the appointment, the, no, uh, the appointments or the nomination. So once that is uh, cleared, once they are cleared, they will be nominated. And our own is to um, to give them the legislative uh, a, a screening by getting them to also to affirm what the, uh, their promises before the Nigerian public. Because we are representative of people, but we are not uh, security agencies. So we will just be there to make sure that at least um, the nominees that were sent to us, uh, we ask them relevant questions, and then which we will need to also present before the people, uh, the people that sent us to this uh, parliament. So that is our business. So this time around, should Nigeria expect something different? Because some Nigerians think it has always been take a bow. Uh, is it going to be a take a bow this time around, or is there is there's going to be a total screen? Well, if we have people we know, if we have people we have their, um, their people we know, uh, there's no need of uh, going to ask uh, for example, if you have somebody that you are close to or somebody you are working with and then you know that he has also gone through screening, you know, for somebody, let me just use a senator, you know, for somebody to become a senator, a ranking senator or a senator has come in three times, he went through electoral processes, went through screening by ICPC and other relevant security agencies. I mean, and this is a colleague that you know that you've been working with in order to deliver dividends to people. So you will come, if you have a question, you can ask him. But if somebody that you are used to on a daily rest, what do you, you know, it's not just everything is, shouldn't be politicalized that uh, you come and take a bow. But you take a bow if you are somebody that someone or someone who belongs to a system and you go back to that system and then the system says, yes, we know you. We know your antecedents. We know your commitment to national development. So we ask relevant questions and then if there is a place to ask, we ask. If there's no, if we don't have much to ask, we're trying to take a bow. I don't think it's a problem. Okay. Now, the Electoral Act gave a stipulated time of 60 days. Has the president not fallen short of the provision of Act? I don't think so, because um, the, if you go and read that Act very well, um, it, um, by, by bringing the names, forward 28 names, he has complied with that Act. So if there's any shortfall, he will add them even before the screening. So I don't think uh, he has... Uh, um, fall short of um, the provisions of um, okay, the constitution. Let me, let me finally ask, you have, you are a representative of the people and a ranking senator. Do you have confidence that this people, President Bola Ahmed Tunubu has nominated, would deliver well or help in developing the economy? My duty is to pray for them. My duty is to pray that they do well for Nigeria. The only son, Mr. President, that has nominated them to get them to sit up 
and do what and do his bidding, and then he has the power to either to uh, of higher higher than us, uh, higher than. <laughs> So if you don't do well, you know you may have your exit door. I don't think uh, uh, Bola Ahmed Tunubu, who has always been nursing the ambition of leading this country, will just um, 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 have people for pleasure purposes. He, he meant well for the country, and he has really worked hard to come to where he is today. So I believe that he's not going to joke with his job. His first line charge is to make sure that he has reputable people, competent people to help and then achieve his um, aspirations for Nigerians. Okay, so what should Nigerians expect differently? Because when we talk about um, Nigerian economy, we could raise our problems starting from insecurity to education and the rest of it. Should Nigerians expect something different from Bola Ahmed Tinubu's administration? Well, so far so good. We are having, um, we are having, um, uh, we have uh, now uh, subsidy remover. So where we are trying to um, work on is to also caution the effect of subsidy by making provision on how to ameliorate the plight of subsidy, increasing minimum wage, you know, putting in infrastructures that can get Nigerians, you know, out of uh, unemployment and things like that. These are things that are also coming through legislative means or through executive uh, uh, amendments or through executive uh, empowerments. So where we where we are. Uh, for now, we can say so far so good. It's not that bad, but we need to immediately. My advice is that uh, time is of essence. Uh, the government needs to be smart, fast, uh, in order to caution the hardship that people are going going through. You know, it's not easy to move fuel, petroleum products from 200 naira to 600 naira. You know, and then uh, without also looking at the plight of the people, how to support the people, how to increase their minimum wages and other. And if you look at the part of what we are losing and the minimum wage, I don't think it's something, I don't think it's a rocket science for the country, you know, to lift the, um, the remuneration of uh, workers up to caution the effect of, um, so if you, if you look at the figures, you always find that um, um, it is not a big rocket science, but people need to sit down, economics need to sit down and then work out a strategy that will be a win-win situation for both the government and the people of Nigeria. All right. Thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate your audience. And at this point, we come to the end of the program. Don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms, on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, on Facebook. Always turn on your notification button to get updates from Prime Reporters. Thank you very much. Stay safe. Thank you, sir. Thank you.